Make sure that all people eligible for social care services receive a personal budget to purchase support for themselves. I believe personalisation should really be called liberation because it stops people doing unto you and it allows you to have things done with you and at your direction. So basically my personal budget has allowed me virtually full control of everyday life and I can do anything as and when I want. If he wants to go to the theatre, or if he wants to go into town, or even if we want to get a taxi, a special taxi for him because he has a wheelchair, we can do that. We will make sure that there's a range of support services for people to purchase. Because of the flexibility, I'm able to do social things with my carers as well as other things. So, for instance, my husband doesn't particularly like the theatre. I love the theatre. So a carer will take me to the theatre. Under the old system, this would not have been allowed. Because you're having the same carers all the time. You're not wondering who's going to come through the door next. I have more than one carer. Today I've got Heather with me. And she does personal care for me. She also helps me with some of my paperwork. She does a little bit of housework for me. And because I'm an uncontrolled epileptic, if I have an epileptic seizure, she deals with that as well. I do have to have someone 24-7 with me. And Heather fulfills part of that time. Other carers fulfill other parts of the time and my family fill in the blanks. So if I need to go to the hospital or to the doctors or anything, it generally is a member of my family that would do that rather than a paid carer. So it's very important, the part that's played by your family and your friends, and that it's very important that it's not taken for granted that all families can do this. One of the things I'd put down was I wanted to go swimming. Now, they could have just looked at that on a piece of paper and thought, she just fancies going swimming. Why should we pay for it to go swimming? The reason I want to go swimming is because I get no physiotherapy whatsoever. And this is a way of me getting some physiotherapy. And also, I do get enjoyment out of it. And I'd sourced a place where I could go and have um, swimming safely and a carer that would go in the pool with me. I got advice by attending lots of different seminars also a lot of the voluntary groups and then also talk, talking to friends who and acquaintances who I've met at user groups and such like. Preparing and putting together my own personal budget and what was involved in that has given me the skills to help other people to do the same thing. I give them a little bit of advice on where to advertise for staff, the sort of questions to ask at interview, things to make certain are in place for instance, their liability insurance, such like. Make sure they've got either a payroll manager on board or if they want to do it themselves, put them in touch with someone who can teach them. It just gives me more freedom being able to spend my money without having to go uh, and ring social services and say, well, can I buy some of my direct payments? Or am I allowed to do this with it? Am I allowed to do that? Etc. Now, as long as I get receipts and provide the payment uh, details, everything works hunky-dory. Where I now get X amount of pounds to look after myself with, and I don't have to ask questions all the time. Like... Can I go and buy a ramp so I can get in my uh, stepdaughter's house? 
and go see the grandkids. Or can I buy a hoist? Because one day I was in bed and we had a power cut. So that was it we decided as soon as we could we would get around to buying one of those. And luckily with a personal budget, I don't have to ask anymore. And it's there available for when we stop at the daughters like this weekend. We should be going to, to look after the grandchildren. The hoist is there to get me in and out of bed. If ever anything goes wrong here, pick the hoist up and bring it here and use the manual hoist instead of my own tracking hoist that I built in. My PA goes to Ashby Link, where I'm doing a night school course on web design at the moment, which is another option I've got with my uh, personal budget face for these things. And it enables me to have a sort of social life and also keep my brain active. Um, when I started to employ people, we put cards with the advert in uh, that I needed PAs, etc., to look after me, and we put one in virtually every shop and post office, that sort of area, far and wide. As an employer, you are liable to pay tax and national insurance for your employees, as in the staff you employ. You pay them your allocated salary staff uh, an hourly rate, which I do, of X amount of pounds. They work four hours, five hours a week. And then at the end of the month, it's all totaled up on a timesheet. And you then give them the net pay and you are liable for national insurance payments as an employer and tax payments as an employer. Obviously the employees pay their own tax at the relevant rate. And then quarterly the tax man sends me a bill that I owe him X amount of pounds which I then write a cheque out and post off uh, to the tax office. Oh, it's marvellous now. I mean, uh, I've got eight grandchildren and uh, last summer I employed one of my PAs to take me out in the van. We took my mother, who was 87, she's 88 next week, bless her. We picked her up, picked two grandchildren up, and we went out for the day. And we ended up at Rand Farm near Rugby, where the kids go, they fed the animals, they interacted with all the things on the farm. The children had a wonderful day, and so did I. It allows me to get and stay in touch with my family. I don't have to get up at a set time, like whenever I can be fitted in on the roster, and I can go to bed when I feel like, not when fitted in on the roster. And so I can just literally run my own life at my own pace to suit myself. My husband had a major, major stroke in September 2009 and it completely paralysed him all the way down on the right hand side from taking his speech to his swallowing to the use of his arm to the use of his leg and he couldn't move at all. Well we were with social services for six months and then he was handed over to an agency. Um, I wasn't too keen on the agency we were with so I had a word with the lady from social services, our care manager and she came and we decided to go on to personal budget. It's helped him to go out. If I'm on my own, I can't move her myself because it's too, it's too heavy and it's too hard work for me. <laughs> so, that's all, folks. That's it, so. What do you say when you're Mummy. Mummy. I'm coming, baby. <laughs> there you are. You can get taxis now that do do wheelchairs, so you can order a taxi and I can get him into town and take him around town. The first place he makes for is the music shop. He'll go to the music shop and he'll buy jazz CDs. He'll go to the library and he'll buy jazz. Um, the theatre he enjoys tremendously and he hasn't been able to go for a long time and just recently we've been able to take him. Went to our granddaughter's little show that they put on and he's going to the operatic 
uh, in March to see Scumbill Papatic do Annie Get Your Gun. And we don't have to worry about any money. If he wants a bit of money, he's got a little bit left after he's paid the carers for him to spend on himself. I think it's a good idea. A very good idea for everybody, really. It's not difficult. It's not a difficult thing to do. All you do is you pay, you just pay them and just get on with it. People are a little bit frightened of personalised budget, but there's nothing to be frightened of at all. Hello, oh, Janet. Thanks, thanks for inviting me here. Um, I understand that you want to set up some services for your dad and you're interested in using a personalised budget yeah. to support his needs. Yeah. Basically, it's a matter of seeing how high he meets different criteria. I can think of a case where a gentleman, an elderly gentleman, uh, has got severe dementia. In every other respect, he's, he, he appears to be in perfect health and he appears to be able to carry on a good conversation with you. But in effect, he lives very much in the present. And I suppose that always stretches across the clock, really, because yes. your dad's day and night differentiation yes, exactly. is getting rather confused, exactly. isn't it? So. And it isn't going to get any better, of course. I mean, that's going to, you know, mm. advance. Exactly, yeah. Mm, How long has he been progressing like this? Four years, three years, probably three to four years. Yeah. He tends to forget when daytime and nighttime begin and end, so his hours are irregular. Uh, he still likes to lead an active life, he has his interests, he watches the television, he watches his sport. He likes to get out regularly, but he needs support with his personal care because he wouldn't remember to attend to this by himself. He needs support for his medications, which support his mental health. Running and maintaining the home, I don't suppose your dad does much of that, does he? No, um, I mean he can, you know, if I say to him, go wash up. You know, mm -hmm. he, he's always washed up, so he's, he's used to doing that. Yeah. And he'll, you know, probably rub the kitchen down, but generally speaking, it's all kept by my sister and I. Yeah. And so his daughters have been providing a, a cycle of care of their own over the last few years and buying in somebody's support themselves, paying from their own purse. Now, this will be based, of course, as well upon an assessment of your dad's income and his own capital. At the end of that conversation, we, the practitioners, go back to the office and we enter the information that we've received from the family and from the individual into the computer, into a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet will give us an amount of money. This gives rise to the support plan. Uh, so at the state of the support plan, having agreed the financial side of things with the family and with our managers, we then have to know make sure that we know that the family understands how much money that they've got to contribute themselves. So altogether the support plan does a number of things. First of all it reflects what that individual's needs and aspirations are. It personalises them as individuals. It states how much money we've got to work with. So altogether the support plan is a picture of the individual's needs and how we and the family are working together to support those needs. At the moment, North Lincolnshire Council is actively trying to develop a website which will link people with particular needs to personal assistants who are seeking employment. And there are also groups available which relate to particular needs anyway. There's the Alzheimer's group, for example, the Parkinson Society, the Stroke group as well. And carers support. If you're a carer and you have needs of your own, then there is support available for you as well. Our assessment process will still include an assessment of risk to the individual. We will work with them to ensure that support is as safe as it can be and of sufficient quality. We will offer help for people to recruit personal assistance safely and we will continue to monitor the quality of support that they receive. No matter how people want to use their personal budget, we still want them to receive safe services. Finally. The other responsibility that the council has is to make sure that people get the support they require at the time that they require it.